Probably time for one more kind of question area. And this again is a perennial one. And it talks, honestly, they're heartbreaking often, these stories that we hear and narratives from people with bipolar disorder who have made life-changing decisions not to have children, to delay having children, real experiences of self-stigma and fear and blame and shame. How, if you were working, you know, clinically as a psychiatric genetic counselor and somebody came to you and said, you know, I want to have kids, but I'm scared. Often they'll phrase it as I'm scared of passing it on. I've had a hard life and I, you know, I have fears around that piece. What would your response be? So, well, I mean, I can't, I can't do it justice, frankly, in about four minutes, which is what we've got left. Because honestly, that, that requires that, that, like, I like to be able to spend like a proper amount of time. Like, you know, typically our sessions are in the region of about an hour to 90 minutes, depending, because it's, it's psychotherapeutic. That's what we're doing, you know. However, I will give you something. Okay. So in those situations, you know, oftentimes, sadly, you know, women in particular, I've found are often told, Explicitly by, by healthcare providers, well, you shouldn't have children, should you? Because you've got bipolar, which can be some of like so profoundly damaging for people to hear. I can't even begin to articulate the ways in which it enrages me. So the way that I think about these things is as follows. Parenting is incredibly hard. I'm not speaking from experience. I've chosen not to do it myself because I don't think that I would be very good at it. Let me just say, and I, I, you know, so I've got my own stuff, right? So I've made decisions not to have children for myself. However, the decision about childbearing is such a profoundly important and personal one. As a genetic counselor, one of my big values is making sure that people have access to the very best information that they can to make such important life decisions in an informed way, right? So, where I usually start from is parenting is hard. It's hard for everybody. Everybody's going to have challenges, right? You, sure, you have bipolar disorder. Maybe it's going to be harder for you to parent. Maybe your child has a higher chance of having bipolar as a result of that. But on the flip side, first of all, you know in advance what one of your challenges is going to be. And that's better than being surprised by it. And because mm-hmm. if you know in advance, there's things that you can do to mitigate. So, for example, if you're somebody who has bipolar disorder and you are thinking about getting pregnant, et cetera, you might have a higher chance of having a, a mental health relapse in the postpartum period, right? There's things that you can do to plan for that, right? Go talk to somebody at the reproductive mental health program near you, for example, to talk about how to manage that chance with medications and so on. You can take medications while you're pregnant, actually. So it's, it's not a blanket. Don't do it. You know, you can absolutely take medications while you're pregnant. And there's things that you can do pre- like preemptively in terms of like having conversations with your loved ones about like, if I'm in the postpartum period and you notice that I'm having a depressive episode, a manic episode, here's what I would like you to do. Right. Mm-hmm. You write down those, those instructions so that, and that gives you a sense of control, even if you're not in a place at the time to manage it yourself. This is the earlier you saying, this is what you, it's, it's beautiful. And that in itself is empowering, I think. And, and, and seems to contribute to people having better mental health just because you feel more in control of the possibilities, you know? So in terms of managing postpartum, those are some things that you can do. But then in terms of chances for children, Okay, you have bipolar. Maybe your ch- child might have a higher chance of having bipolar. Sure. Again, however, everybody has a chance to have a child that develops bipolar. Everybody does. Everyone, right? Your chance might be a bit higher. Sure. Yeah. But do you know what the good thing is? You know what bipolar looks like because you've lived it. And that is not, a, not to be sniffed at. Because if you can identify what it looks like, and many, many people cannot, for FYI, right? Many people cannot. But if you can identify it, that means that you can get help for your child in a timely manner. You can get appropriate help for them. And that means that the chance of having a really good long-term prognosis is increased, Mm -hmm. right? So maybe there's a higher chance to have bipolar disorder, but you're really well-placed to manage it effectively. 
right? And every again, just to bring it back to the idea that everybody has a chance to have a child with bipolar disorder, right? So I think that for me, the way I approach it is, if you want to do this, of course you can. Of course you can. Like, yeah, it's there's there's nothing to stop you. You know, if you're scared, totally get it. But there are things that you can do to sort of like mitigate some of that scared. You can do planning in advance around the pregnancy. Around you can do planning around like, well, what happens if I if I'm worried that my child might be starting to experience symptoms and so on. Like, you know, there are contingencies that we can put into place to manage that stuff. You can be a great parent with bipolar disorder. There's nothing to stop you from doing that if it's what you want. Beautiful. 